Turn number one. Field now set and getting ready to go. Evan Cooley, the rookie driver, his first ever USF 2000 start, and he'll do so from P1. Alongside him is teammate Thomas Schrag. If you want excitement, expect four, five, maybe six wide as they come down. Field set, couple drivers can contact further back, and we already have contact. No start as there was contact further back. Couple of drivers stacking things up. One of the D-Force cars from further back went around. There was a couple at the back. That might have been Brady Golan. I think he was the only driver further back, but all, but Quinn Armstrong, Lucas Fercuri, and Maxwell Jameson were all 13th, 14th, and 15th, Michael. People just getting caught up a bit there. Indeed, that was the number 10 of Lucas Fercuri, the Brazilian who went around. Yeah, and being told, potentially the number 19, uh, Xavier Kokai lost his front wing as well. So let's have another look at this, Michael, and have a look at this as well. We got Logan Adams here. He's the pro. One driver checking up, pulls to the outside. Fakuri got onto it. What do you think about that? He kind of got off it. Kind of a chain reaction, Logan. Yeah, that's kind of, that's just a panic from everybody. It's, uh, yeah, first guy hit the brakes to slow everybody up, and, and the, the back guy's got the, got the bad end of it. Quinn Armstrong involved here, the Aussie driver in the number 11. Tough one for Quinn because he comes into the championship right now, sixth place in points. He's been very strong. Five straight top tens for Quinn, who I don't know if you saw this or not on racer.com, but got a chance to meet Will Power as well. We were at Barber Motorsports Park. He was there coaching some of the USF junior drivers. Thrilled to get a chance to meet his fellow Aussie. He's a legend, correct? He is. Will Power, 70 poles for that young man and for anybody from down under to be able to be in the presence of Will Power and growing up, having somebody to root for in open wheel racing in America, knowing that someday you want to race there as well to be able to meet your idol. I think of so many times we've talked about these USF 2000, USF uh, Pro 2000 drivers being able to meet their idols and being there when they're meeting them for the first yeah, time. It's, it's always a thrill. Hey, speaking of meeting your idols, let's go back to Logan. The thing about having Newcastle Motorsports Park, your family's racetrack, you were there. Joseph Newgarden, so many young drivers call, uh, you know, uh, Connor Daly as well. You've had a chance to, to kind of meet and know Joseph. What has he done for you in terms of giving you some insight? Uh, yeah, I mean, he Give, he gives us track walks, and uh, last year at Toronto was actually the first time that happened. He, uh, I went into the Penske hauler. He went through his, all of his video and went through a few laps and said, I do this here, I do that there, and he helped me out through there. And then this year at St. Pete, actually, we were driving around on our tugger. We saw him on his, so my grandpa yelled at him, and he came and, came and joined <laughs> us and did a few laps with us. So That's awesome. It's, yeah, like uh, that. it's very nice to have somebody like that. Yeah, solid connection for you for sure. Uh, again, they're having to try. It looks like they're going to get uh, the, the 11 of Quinn Armstrong refired potentially, trying to find out where the damage is. Again, a lot of stack up, as we said there, folks. Not sure what it is yet for, for uh, Quinn. Let's take the opportunity while we have it right now to have a look at the top five in points. Max Garcia coming off uh, three straight wins, dominated the action at the Grand Prix of St. Petersburg, won the first round of the triple header at NOLA Motorsports Park, then followed that up with a third and a fourth. So a strong run to start the season for Garcia, although the consistency of Evagoras Papasavas puts him right there, only 16 points back. Five straight podium finishes for Papasavas, the only driver to be on the podium in all five races so far this year. Sam Corey bumping up into third with a solid victory in round number four, the middle of the triple header at NOLA. Uh, Nico Christodou, the Canadian, moved himself up as well with a big win in round number five. He's P4, and Joey Brienza uh, on the strength of a third in the race number one at NOLA, plus the pole position finds himself P5. So very early, Michael, we can look at the points, but as we know, things can shake up. One bad weekend, you get into an incident in race one, you struggle in race two, it just flips everything upside down. And you know when you see someone that has a bad weekend, but we're starting to, at this point in the season, getting an idea of who the contenders will be. And I'm so interested to see the start of this race and Max Garcia in that fifth row what will he do on the start? I watched him as he came down as we had a no start. He was already the outs would have been the inside wall. He was running alongside there already potentially eyeing getting a run down into turn number one. It's going to be fun to watch to see what he does on the start. I think if there's a track where you could potentially not qualify well, like maybe at the tail of the top top 10, this is the place to do it because by the time you get down into turn number one, you're three, four wide. Guys are diving out. You can make a big move to the inside. Sometimes you come out on top. Sometimes you don't, but you can. This is a track where you can obviously and get a lot pretty quickly. So one more lap around, I'm being told here, folks. The uh, AMR IndyCar safety crew doing their best to clean up a lot of the damage that happened. There was a number of drivers in part of that contact. Wings got dropped. Of course, uh, as we know, Quinn Armstrong, we believe, being pushed behind the wall here right now. 
Uh, we'll see whether or not Fakuri was able to get back to pit lane. Number of drivers involved early. Fakuri, Kokai, and Armstrong all involved in that one. And again, as Logan had said, Michael, just a, a chain reaction happens. People kind of check up coming out there. Uh, it looked to me like the front couple of rows, they were lined up really nicely. Nobody was changing their, their speed, just the guys in the back getting too antsy. And everybody got packed up real tight there, and all that took was for Fakuri and uh, to have that, that quick contact. And you go around, everybody gets upset, you lose a, a, a wing, Kokai lost a wing. So everybody back on pit lane getting prepared. What's interesting about this weekend is how long have these young men been waiting to run this circuit and you're out before they even see a green flag so it's clearly frustrating obviously there are more opportunities this race weekend to be, but to be out before it even starts yeah. it, it makes for a long weekend and listen like you said they've been dreaming about this they want to get to this track and to be out early is tough being told that both lucas fakuri and uh xavier kokai the two drivers that are uh, into pit lane work being done i think maybe kokai back out onto the racetrack now i believe i saw him blending back in but indeed, we talk a little bit about, about how crucial it is to start up front. We are going to still double file restart this one. Uh, some stats brought to me with, were kind of interesting. Here in USF 2000, of the 24 races, 11 of them were won from pole. But again, you got to go back to 2021 for Yuvin Sundaramurthy on the pole there as well. I think I saw another stat I was given as well. Charlie hooked me up with the, the last four races, the pole sitter finished third. So tough, tough to be the pole sitter, right? Because I said... Number one, you can get passed on the start, and when there's a restart, if you're up front, you know you're a sitting duck. They're going to roll by you. It's, it's, it's just so much of a draft here. You can go from third or fourth and lead in turn number one on a restart. And we've seen leaders make mistakes down into turn number one and turn number seven. Getting set for a restart, double file, going to be interesting to see if we can make it cleanly through, but this first start that we'll see green for the USF 2000 drivers making their way out of turn 14 to get this thing underway. Two laps in the books, obviously, the put lap number three. We did start the clock when they came back around. Once again, it's an all-exclusive auto sport front row. The rookie Evan Cooley on the inside. Thomas Schrag on the outside. They'll line things up. Better start looking for the green flag from Aaron Likens, and we've got it. We are green, 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 and the move to the outside is Elliot Cox. He's thinking about the outside. Cooley down to the bottom. Right there with him is uh, the number three of Chris Dudulu. He's pushing hard. Not a great start for Schrag. He'll drop into P3. Look at that four wide. Here come the brakes down into the corner. Corner, Cooley on the inside. Thus far, everybody cleaning through. I think Chris Dudulu though may have got through. He did. Chris Dudulu goes to the P1. Great start for Nico. Chris Dudulu from P5 got the run, as I said, and coming through three and four. Always sketchy as that they got to get themselves into position. Here's that five six I talked about in the keys of the race. Always tough on the opening circuit. Thus far, everybody clean and green coming through. Michael, solid start here for USF 2000. Elliot Cox watched him go through turn number one. Nearly got collected battling it for that fifth position. He fell to six, but now in line. A couple drivers making a move to the bottom here, coming over in. That's contact there. All right. And that is your point leader. That was Garcia who got shot. One of the drivers from Jay Howard, driver development down the inside, got up over top of the curb. And another one of the D-Force drivers potentially off here as well. Garcia, your point leader. Like I said, you never know what's going to happen in these races. Contact coming into that corner looped him around. Hopefully we can get a chance to have a look at the replay of that momentarily, but the driver's super aggressive. Here comes the rundown. Watch for this driver all the way to the bottom. You're going to see one of the Jay Howard cars go down deep. He's going to get up on top of the curbing, and at that point you can't control it. Left, uh, Right front into left rear. Logan, you've seen this before many years of karting. That's just a, an overtaking move that didn't work. You get up on the curbing, and you lose control. Yeah, very easy to do. Very, very, especially with these sausage curbs, you can you can definitely lose control of the car in, in a split seconds so just when uh, when two cars are that close and, and one makes a small mistake it things like that happen you're uh, racing here this afternoon you take anything for yourself <laughs> from the start they're going to chance to look at it yeah most definitely uh, i'll definitely be ready for the front guys to check up um <laughs> I, I will not be making that mistake oh boy he'll start from the inside of road number uh, five and again logan adams from comet racing joining us here uh multi-generational racing family as i said but drivers finally start set to settling in i said it was actually chris Dudulu. the number three is max taylor they have very similar cars three is taylor two is chris Dudulu. it's actually max Max Taylor, who has moved his way forward. He needs it because he's seventh place in points coming in. Taylor's biggest uh, top, top finish of third in race uh, number three at NOLA. So a very aggressive Max Taylor goes to the front. Big move to the inside, or the outside really, rather. 
of uh, Evan Cooley on the opening lap, and he is stretching away. This is the gap right now for the number three of Max Taylor at a Hoboken, New Jersey, also running in USF Juniors this year, a double-duty program. Looking to grab that first USF 2000 win. Looking back at that turn seven incident, I believe it was Michael Costello which made who made contact with Max Garcia. Those two kind of came out together, and when they saw the way that they filed back in, it looked like contact with Michael Costello that uh, actually cost Mar Max Garcia to go around. And again, look at this in the points. As I said, Garcia rolls in here with a 16-point lead, three wins on the season, four podiums. Now he finds himself back in 19th. The driver, he's battling with Evagoras Papasabas, P4. This would tighten the championship in a big way. There's a lock up there to the inside. That is one of the, I think that's Papa Savas, I believe. Yeah, it's Papa Savas, I think, working his way forward. So again, Taylor leading 1.8 seconds uh, here, five laps in, and really just two laps at green as well. And driving very smooth. It's, what's impressive is after the dust up at turn seven, the field pretty single file, and everybody kind of filing, finding their way in this early stage of this race. Obviously, we've, we've got 15 lap or 15 laps in the entire event, so a long way to go, but a little battle here and there. But everybody doing a really good job. As oh, well. oh, we have contact, contact at seven. Yeah, contact at seven. I'm hoping that that might have. I don't know if that was Cooley or not coming through. Driver has gone around on I the outside in turn number seven. I think it's Thomas Schrag. It is the number 92 of Thomas Schrag. That might have been a battle between himself and Joey Brienza, but Schrag has spun around coming through turn number uh, seven. And Michael, contact like that, depending on how bad it was, if, if they actually interlocked wheels, that could be rear suspension damage for Thomas Schrag. I would imagine that's what it is. As he oh. pulls away, yeah. he looks like he's okay. I thought the back end kind of stepped out. He's not crab walking, so he looks like he may be okay. I think they're going to ask him to get that car to pit lane. I think there may be some damage, some, some potential left rear damage on the car of Thomas Schrag. That was contact coming through there. He was around the corner. Whoever was behind him made contact. It might have been Joey Brienza. So are they believe, I think we're being told that he stayed out onto the racetrack. They're likely going to throw the black flag here at Thomas Schrag. I think they've identified some kind of damage for Schrag. We'll try to pick him up as he comes across start finish here as well. Number of drivers fall, falling back a little bit here. But indeed, Taylor, Brianza, Papa Savas, Christodoulou, and, and Cooley now the top five. And he's still on the racetrack at that speed. They give him the black, I believe. So we'll find out what happens here for Thomas Schrag. We'll get a chance to have a look at the replay when we get a chance here. But the gap right now, over two seconds for Max Taylor up front. Joey Brianza up into second. Everybody moving forward. And indeed, black flag was displayed to... Uh, Thomas Schrag for the contact there. Not sure why the black came out, whether they thought he had damage or not, but pretty quick coming across the line for us here. This is a good look at your lead. Taylor, Brianza, Papa Savas. If he would finish here, Michael, that would be six straight podium finishes. Well, you talked about Max Garcia having the points lead, but anything can happen. No matter how good of an advantage you think you have, something like that and that incident unfolded with Garcia and Costello. Max Garcia up on the wheel in a big way. He's already got up to 16th position by uh, Cabrera and Fakuri. So you know that uh, Garcia digging hard to try to work his way forward. He's uh, just right there with uh, Costello and Jameson. So everybody digging hard right now. There's the 67 of Elliot Cox running in the sixth spot right behind him, Sam Corey. Big run for Corey. He'll look to the bottom of the racetrack coming into turn number one, side by side. Oh, oh. contact there as well. Up over the curbing again. And that is the 67 of Cox. As Corey went to the inside, got up over the curbing. We've seen that twice already now. He gets into him, and he's going to fight for his life right now as he's got Carson Edder, Aaron Houck, and Brady Golden right there. I don't know what L.A. Cox could have done as they got down into turn number one. It's Cooley got into the entrance of the turn as they made that left-hander into turn number two. They just ran out of room at the exit of turn number one. Let's see. Here is it on the replay. Locked up the right front, up over the curb again, lost it. Logan Adams, we, we saw this already one time. It's when you get over the sausage curbing, you, you just lose control of the car. It's gonna, the front end's gonna wash out, correct? Yeah, it's it's extremely easy to do. It starts bouncing and it works its way out there. And you got somebody just as aggressive as you on the outside, and 
there's not a lot of room to play with. Yeah, it's, tough one there for Ellie Cox was holding that position, P6. And as Corey's coming in, both of them lock it up. So you really have no control of the car. Everybody's locked up. You see nothing but tire smoke at the entrance of turn number one, but Elliot Cox, the loser out of that. They always talk about tire dynamics. You can only do so much with 100% of the tire, right? If you're using 100% on braking, you're not using any on steering, right? So that's, it's or or uh, putting power down, it's acceleration. So if you're fully locked up, you cannot, even if you've got the wheels turned fully cranked, it's doing nothing but stopping at that point. You have to release. Once you release, often that's when you get the contact. We'll do you, give you a top 10 run re, uh, restack here as they come back across the line to complete lap number seven, closing in on the halfway point of a 15 lapper here. Max Taylor leads now by 1.6 seconds. Joey Brienza in second. Evagoras Papa Savas in third. Even Cooley in fourth. Sam Corey after the contact now finds himself P5. Nico Christodoulou in sixth. Nicholas Giafoni is now up into the seventh spot. P uh, plus four for Giafoni, who started 11th. Ayrton Hout, who started all the way back at 17th. How about that driver? Uh, the number 58 out of McCordsville, Indiana, finds himself up into eighth position. What a great run for Ayrton Hout. And here's a young driver. Uh, we're going to have him actually in the booth this afternoon for the USF Pro 2000 race, Michael. S supremely well-spoken, such a nice young man, was part of the Team USA scholarship program, but another driver who's just trying to scramble the money together to see if he can't continue the season. They're doing everything they can to try to find the money to do this, but a very talented young driver for sure. We talk about it in every form of motorsports. We talked about Josh Mason trying to make his way through an Indy next. Sometimes the finances aren't there, and the only way to advance is to win a championship because money is tight, especially as high as you can get in this open wheel series. The higher you get, the more it costs to run, and hopefully he'll be able to find that funding for down the road because it's certainly not an easy game to play. Hearing some insight from race control that there are going to be some five-second penalties being laid out for incident responsibility. We'll learn more about that. Obviously, that means, means that the results that we get will be provisional. Here's another little tidbit here as we're watching this battle between Garcia, and I want to say that is potentially Garcia scrapping in here right now with the 18 of Brady goal and able to get by. So move Garcia back into 10th. What a drive back for uh, Max Garcia, your point leader out of Florida, the advanced auto parts number 24 for Pabst Racing back up into the top 10, quite a ways up to Elliott Cox, who still runs in ninth. What a recovery for Garcia, who was, I think, 20th at one point. Yeah, he fell all the way to the 20th position. But we talk about drivers and that maturity and that maturation level. Take your time. Be patient. We've seen it happen time and time again. Somebody in the top five gets spun around. They work their way back into the top ten. He could probably still salvage seventh or eighth before this is over. Any points are better than being all the way back in 18th or 19th, as we had said. Once again, folks, my name is Rob Howden, joined by Michael Young and Logan Adams here in the public address booth at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, the first of five races on the dock for the USF Pro Champions, presented by Continental Tire. A doubleheader for USF 2000, triple header for USF Pro 2000. And we're seeing some, some drivers really on recovery runs, others really having solid drives up front. Here's one for Max Taylor and some more from our stat guys here. They are just nailing it. VRD Racing has won race one the last two years here. You go back to 2022, and Alex Quinn, who came over, his only ever started USF 2000. He came here and was a winner in the opening race. Of course, Sam Corey uh, won the opening race last year here as well. So uh, VRD looking to try to keep the streak going with three straight opening race wins here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. And it's a 1.7 second lead for Taylor. Here's a big move to the inside. That's Carson Edder trying to find a way by the number eight, and he clicks cleanly through and doesn't make a mistake. That's Tanner DeFamous uh, in front of them. Michael Costello right there as well. So again, Costello and Edder battling it out right now for 13th position. I think it's Costello had maybe gotten by, and Edder was looking to go back down to the inside of turn number one. Because we know Costello, of course, was involved in the incident earlier. He may have a penalty waiting for him as well for the contact that he had earlier on with uh, with Max Garcia. Still unsure about the potential contact between Thomas Schrag and it might have been jo uh, Joey Brienz's his teammate. It'll be interesting how those penalties play out when this thing is over. But up front, Max Taylor, his lead almost two seconds, 1.7. As this time when they come to the start-finish line, they will have four to go. Race number one for the USF 2000 here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Max Taylor trying to get that first big victory. He's got one in USF Juniors competition, but anytime you can get a little bit further up in the, in the order and grab another one, you know that you are going to be... Uh, 
you, you know you're going to be on the way forward. You want to get those wins as you keep going up. Consistency is great, but for a driver here like Max Taylor, you want to get the win. Like the battle right now here for P3, Papasavas, Evan Cooley, who started on pole, not giving up, and they're side by side through turn number one. Cooley tried the outside. Papasavas still had the inside. Look at this scrap. This is for P3. It's Papasavas trying to go six straight podiums, and the rookie Cooley trying to start things off here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway with a podium. He is on the gearbox coming out of five and six. That all started at the exit of 14. Cooley was there, and Papasavas saw him. Cooley drop low. They'll battle down into turn number seven side by side. Here they come. Papasavas trying to hold the inside blocks down to the bottom. Cooley going to try the over-under. Oh, how about side by side through eight? Cooley gets a little wide in the exit. He's going to throw it to the inside at nine. We'll lose them for a second. Will they get cleanly through? We're gonna have to wait all the way over here to turn number 12. Taylor, Brienza, who's the first to come out here? It's still Papa Savas. Cooley ducks high. I like this battle right now. You know who's loving it? Sam Corey, the 23. He says, guys, keep fighting, because I'm coming on strong. I do like this as well. Uh, four different teams in the top five. Taylor for VRD, Brienza and Cooley for exclusive, Papa Savas for Jay Howard, and Corey for VRD Racing. Cooley got Papa Savas, did it. The entrance of turn number 12 got around. Nice move by Cooley. So this guy's a rookie. Let's put it that way. He <laughs> runs in the USF Juniors program right now, so qualifies on pole, and is now eyeing up a potential podium finish uh, for exclusive on sport. That would be second and third for the exclusive crew. I'm sure they would love to have seen Thomas Schrag up there as well. He's trying to keep digging. He's about, I think, he may be a lap back. He may not be, actually. He continues to dig. But nonetheless, Taylor up front by 2.3 seconds. Again, the battle for third is going to give Brienza a little bit of breathing room as well. Well, we watch Papa Savas, and we talk about this all the time. He's locked him up several times and probably has flat spotted that tire. And once you flat spot that tire, it's hard to get that to go away. So look at that battle we saw coming through five and six. That is Chiafoni, Christodoulou, Hauk, Cox, and I think Garcia's in there as well. Oh, yeah, we're going at it up front. You see the... Uh, white, blue, and red livery. That's the scholarship colors of last year's USF Juniors champion, Nicholas Giafoni. And again, Giafoni, oh, there's some trouble there. That's, I, that might be Hauk. I think Hauk had some trouble. He's trying to get back on, and they're going to stream on by. Ayrton Hauk had some trouble, had a tank slapper coming out a uh, turn number eight. He's going to drop a couple of spots, and that is going to allow, I believe, Golan to Fabus, and I think he, maybe even Costello to get by. So a little bit of an issue there for Ayrton Hauk from P8. Nonetheless, a great drive. We'll see if he can't work his way forward. Laps winding down in this one. Two laps to go when they come back around. Lap 13 in the books, a 2.9 second lead for Max Taylor, looking to give VRD it's third straight opening race win of the doubleheader here at in Indianapolis. Here comes Giafoni, though. He wants to get to sixth. He's going to the outside. Chris Dudu looking to block to the inside. Further battle back between Cox and Garcia. Why not? And I think Garcia has the spot on Cox. Go Garcia in eighth, Cox ninth, Brady Golan up into tenth. Brady started back in 19th, plus nine for Brady Golan. And for poor uh, how that's a byproduct of that Five cars yep. racing in, in that tight quarters. How many times we talked? Seven, eight, nine. There's not a lot of room there, and Hawk was the big loser as either he had contact with someone else or just lost it exiting turn number seven, going into turn number eight. I feel like coming through 80 may try to get up in the curb or something. There's contact again. There's Giafoni. Giafoni together. That is an issue with Giafoni, and I don't know if that was Garcia. Might have been Chris Tadulu. A couple drivers together coming into the braking zone at turn number seven. So we have had some chaos here in USF 2000. White flag will fly this next time by for Max Taylor. Two drivers involved over there, the one of them being the number one of Giafoni. Not quite sure who it was exactly, but here comes Taylor. Cross the yard of bricks for one more lap around. Will Taylor get his first USF 2000 victory? He's digging in right now in a big way. 3.6 seconds. Taylor, Brienza, and how about Evan Cooley? Number three, looking good here for Max Taylor. Digging through turn number two, over to three. Just got to hit your marks with that kind of a lead. You guarantee they'll be on the radio. Logan, they're going to be on the radio kind of walking him through this last lap, right? Oh, yeah, telling him to don't celebrate too early. Keep it calm. There's still uh, still about a mile left of track, so. Krista Dulu is the other car involved with the contact with Giafoni. Tough one there, as we said. So Krista Dulu, another driver coming in fourth place in points. He and... Uh, 
Giafoni get together coming into the breaking zone of turn number seven. Looks like Giafoni was kind of hanging out to the outside and contact coming in. So both those drivers involved. Tough one for both Chris Dudu and Giafoni, but this is the final circuit right now. Max Taylor could become the 10th U.S. driver to win at IM, uh, IMS here in this program. And once again, you're loving this, aren't you, Charlie? Literally, if Evan Cooley finishes third, the pole sitter five straight races. We, four straight? Five straight, I think. Five straight races, the pole sitter is going to finish third. You do not want to qualify on pole here in Indianapolis right now. You, you, you're guaranteed a podium, but you'll come home third. There's the checker flags, folks. Twin checkers are out, and look at the excitement for Max Taylor. He has won at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway and called a 4.042 second uh, win for him. Big win for the New Jersey driver in the third straight opening race doubleheader win for VRD. Huge run as well for exclusive Autosport. They'll cap off the podium. Joey Brienza in second in the number 91 and Evan Cooley, the rookie, so super impressive. Qualified on pole, finished third, almost predestined for him to finish P3. Evagoras Papasabas just on the outside of another podium, another podium finish would have been in sixth straight, but with Garcia down in sixth. Garcia came from 20th to P6. That is a recovery. Maybe the recovery of the race. I thought 7th or 8th, but with all those dust-ups from 6th from to 10th, he was able to take advantage of it, played his patience game to finish 6th for Max, Max Garcia. I, I, I would consider that a win. Uh, 100%. Listen, when you have an incident like that and you're backwards in the grass in turn number 7, you, you figure you're done. And he came back up there without a full course yellow either. I think that's the key thing. He literally drove himself back up. Now, he Granted, he had some luck, as you said. Chris Dulu getting together with Giafoni, Schrag, some drivers who fell back to the tail of the field. But all in all, just a tremendous drive. Sam Corey ending up in fifth, but Max Garcia from deep, deep in the field up to sixth. Elliot Cox holding on to seventh, so a top ten still. Brady Golan, ninth, uh, 19th to eighth, plus 11 for the Texan. Michael Costello coming back to ninth. And Tanner DeFavis, Indiana driver. Able to hold on to the top 10. We will have a look at the results here right now. Unofficially, remember, I talked about the fact that on the radio, I'm hearing all this stuff about uh, about potential five-second penalties. So these are provisional results. Unofficial for sure. Max Taylor, though, with the win. I don't think any issues for Max. He was able to get around Evan Cooley and pull away. So the Hoboken, New Jersey driver will celebrate win number one in USF 2000 and the number three for VRD Racing. Joey Brienza and Evan Cooley, the two drivers for exclusive autosport in second and third. That's your podium. Evagoras Papasavas, I was going to say that he may take over the point lead, but with Garcia in six, I don't think that's going to happen. It'll tighten that point lead uh, for Garcia, but not quite enough. Seventh, Elliot Cox, goal in eighth. Uh, Costello ninth and DeFabus in 10th, as I had said. Ayrton Houck, who was 8th at one point, ends up coming back home for 11th. He and his DC Autosport teammate finishing 11th and 12th, all told with a 22-car field. Solid run for both Ayrton Houck and the Californian Carson Edder. But out of the car is Max Taylor, and he will be thrilled with that one. Taylor getting the victory that he was looking for. Big for him. He needed it for sure. Max Taylor, seventh place in points coming in, and it's just got better and better on the season, Michael. DNF in the opening round. Here he is, the <laughs> run into the team. Dan Mitchell right there, the whole crew fired up for Taylor. DNF in race one, 15th in race two, fifth in race three and four, third, first. That's momentum, and that's going in the right direction. And wins, as you always say, breed wins, and he's on that success. He, he, he's taken the, 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 the stumbles of the first part of the season, and he's becoming very successful and these wins will bring more wins and for Max Taylor that was a, that was a strong outing today to win in the dominant fashion he did. 100% we talk a lot about opening the you know, the floodgates once you've got that first victory especially here in USF 2000 let's wrap things up here with Logan Adams Logan you're going racing as well we said you were able to take away a little bit from the start watching great to have you in the booth and give you your thoughts on that race overall. Yeah thank you for having me Rob it was a it was a blast um, that was a very entertaining to watch from up here that's the first time I've been in this situation so I'm uh yeah it was it was a lot of action so it was very entertaining a lot of friends and family here this weekend yeah yeah a ton we've uh, actually got the biggest biggest turnout at the tent we've had so far this year so um yeah glad to have everybody here supporting me and um excited to see what I can excited to see what I can do in race one all the best this afternoon Logan Adams, folks from Comet Racing, going to join us uh, on the racetrack here as USF Pro 2000 coming uh, back on this afternoon. But again, this is the driver who uh, is going to 
hoist the big trophy here, Max Taylor, his first win in USF 2000 competition. And I'll tell you, that's a big one. Again, three straight opening wins for VRD Racing as well. They've got uh, they got some really quick hot rods uh, here this year for sure. Max Taylor, we know Nikita Johnson's going to be trying to go for a race win as well. Uh, in USF Pro 2000 this afternoon. But again, Taylor, Brienz, and Cooley, the drivers who will join us here up on the podium. We'll fire that up here momentarily. And of course, as we know, uh, later on this afternoon, as I had said, we'll be going back at it once again with uh, USF Pro 2000. Michael, I think around 3 o'clock start for that one. We get to see the drivers. We Actually, Logan and I were looking. It's interesting. Every step up, about four seconds faster. Four seconds faster, four seconds faster. Logan just told me, USF Pro 2000 are topping 152 miles an hour at the end of the straightaway. That's something. That's getting it done. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely quick. Um, it, it, it feels like it, too. So going into that braking zone. Tell your grandfather we say hello. Yes, sir, will do. Thank all you, guys. Right, all right, folks, we are bringing our drivers up here into uh, the uh, victory podium here. We will go to a quick break when we get back. Time to introduce the top three in USF 2000. Start. You had to get aggressive. You made a move to the outside. Tell me about the, the uh, attack at the start. Yeah, I mean, I knew my plan was to be to get to the lead as fast as I can, um, and I did just that. Um, I got to lead, uh, had a little battle with Evan, and I just checked out and put some good laps in, and the VRD car just drove itself, really. I put cruise control on and just left. There's nothing like clean air at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, right? Yeah, I mean, this is an amazing feeling to do this here. I, I couldn't have jumped it any different. Who do you want to thank today? I want to thank all of VRD, Dan Mitchell, Jacob Loomis, all the guys who make it happen. They put a rocket ship of a car and a program together. I want to thank all my sponsors um, and, of course, my parents for coming out here and my sister as well. Get on top of this podium. We got a trophy for you. Max Taylor, folks, a huge victory today in USF 2000. Again, a number of our USF junior drivers kind of stepping up to make things happen. We had rookies here as well, but Taylor, very impressive. Attacked at the start and comes away with the victory. Put it on cruise control once he had clean air. Everybody else battling in behind him. All in all, a tremendous drive. And again, as I said, Three straight opening race wins for VRD. Alex Quinn in 2022, Sam Corey last year, and now Max Taylor starting things off with VRD again here. There's your podium. Tremendous drive for these young drivers. They'll be back at it again tomorrow morning for uh, race number two. I got a chance to go and debrief a little bit, dial things in, and see if they can't get just a little bit better for tomorrow. But again, 63 degrees here right now. I'm expecting probably... 50 to 52 degrees tomorrow morning. The cool factor may make things a little interesting to see who has the right setup on the cars. But nonetheless, again, big championship implications as well for Evagoras Papasavas coming in four spot. Max Taylor, rather uh, Max Garcia in six. The, the championship tightening up and big victory here for Taylor working his way forward as well. He's going to jump up in the championship fight. Here comes the champagne, the sparkling cider for the drivers here in USF 2000. Five races on the docket, as I said. One down, four to go. And guys, drop those trophies. Grab that champagne. Evan, drop it down, guys. Grip it and rip it. Let's have some fun here. A little spray. A little. little... Got to get out of that one. Good opportunity to have some fun here for the drivers of the category. So champagne, sparkling cider flying. Fantastic run to keep things underway. Talented drivers here in USF 2000. Folks, that wraps things up for the broadcast. Come back and join us on the USF Pro Championships YouTube channel this afternoon, 3 o'clock Eastern start time, the first of three races for USF Pro 2000. Thank you so much for tuning in. On behalf of Anderson Promotions and Continental Tire, my name's Rob Howden. Bye for now.